BMW's second generation 4 series convertible switches to a fabric folding roof and so can now offer a more credible alternative option to executive segment mid-sized Cabriolet buyers not already swayed by the competing charms of rival open top versions of the Audi A5 and Mercedes C-Class. You won't get the large boot and cutting edge driving dynamics of the 4 Series Coupe, but compensations come in the form of refinement, security and drop top desirability. You'd like one. Welcome to a very different kind of BMW 4 Series convertible. This is the second generation version, and as you can see, it's got a rather more assertive demeanor. But the real story here happens when you raise the roof. As you can see, it's a fabric top, which for BMW is a bit of a departure when it comes to this class of car. Yes, the Munich maker has long used fabric roofs with its 2 series and its 8 series convertible models but for most of this century to date the company's core mid-sized cabrio offerings have had metal folding tops. The very first 4 series convertible of 2014 had that kind of arrangement and so did its predecessor the uh, last generation 3 series convertible which was launched in 2004. Heavy folding metal panels though don't make much sense in an era where engineering is increasingly all about weight reduction. And sure enough, the rag top here is 40% lighter than the old metal item. It also helps with more appealing and larger proportions and it allows for a much bigger boot. And of course, this G23 series design announced in late 2020 features all the second generation 4 series changes which have also enhanced the coupe and grand coupe body styles in this model line. This overt front kidney grille, a more sophisticated interior, 48 volt mild hybrid tech and more engaging handling. All of which should give this car a more distinct appeal against its two traditional arch rivals, the Audi A5 Cabriolet and the Mercedes C-Class Cabrio. So let's put it to the industry's most comprehensive test. One of the things that has fundamentally characterized the engineering of mid-sized and larger BMW models over the years has been the brand's insistence on maintaining its classic 50-50 weight distribution. A mantra observed fastidiously over the years, except in one instance. Back in 2008, in the brand's haste to join the then fashionable trend for equipping cabrios with folding metal roof panels, the Munich engineers uh, they were forced to compromise with weight distribution just for once. In fitting this setup to their E93 design 3 Series convertible, they didn't have much option. Uh, the car's roof down configuration placed a stack of heavy folded panels over the rear axle. Not much could be done to improve things when the first generation F33 design uh, 4 Series convertible was launched in 2014 with pretty much the same roof mechanism. Only with the switch of this G23 era model back to a fabric top can a mid-sized convertible BMW finally once again be offered with the kind of evenly weighted platform which ought to set its handling apart from its rivals. So we approached the drive in this car with quite high hopes. Uh, it also benefits from a package of dynamic changes uh, which were installed into coupe and grand coupe versions of the second generation 4 series. Uh, they were all aimed at making cars from this model line drive more distinctively than their commoner 3 series counterparts. To that end, the chassis has been extensively tweaked and there's a wider rear track that gives this G23 series design a 21mm lower centre of gravity than any 3 series. And that's just the start. The body and suspension mountings are stiffer and on standard suspension, this 4 rides 10mm lower than a 3. There are also firmer springs and anti-roll bars, plus this 4 series model gets a freshly developed double jointed spring strut front suspension and a 5 link rear axle. What is of course directly shared with the 3 series and with pretty much every other mid to large size BMW is what lies beneath the bonnet. 
for this generation of models, the two litre petrol turbo unit uh, used by the 420i and 430i variants has been carried over without too many changes, but the other mainstream power plants are new, which means 48 volt mild hybrid tech for the diesels, all of them, uh, for the four cylinder 420d and the six cylinder 430d and M440d, and the same electrified tech for the six cylinder petrol M440i model that we're trying here, which emits a particularly purposeful burble from its twin tailpipes. It's the kind of thing that in this convertible model you can hear, of course, much more clearly when the roof is down. Now the switch uh, from metal panels to fabric top hasn't made the uh, retraction operation very much quicker. It now takes 18 seconds rather than 20 seconds, but the key improvement lies with the fact that when you want to erect or retract the roof on the move, uh, you can now do it at speeds of up to 31 miles an hour rather than having to slow all the way down to below eight miles an hour, and that was the case before. The key question here though is whether the change in design format for the roof has fundamentally changed the way that this car drives. There were lots of reasons why you might have wanted its direct predecessor, but most of them were attributes that were also offered by this car's arch rivals, the Cabriolet versions of the Audi A5 and the Mercedes C-Class. Now, if you remember the old model, or you've driven either of those two competitors, it doesn't take long behind the wheel of this G23 4 Series uh, to realize that a decent step forward's been made here. Uh, for reasons that BMW hasn't troubled us with, uh, the company's X-Drive four-wheel drive system isn't available further down the range in the way that it is with the equivalent 4 Series Coupe, so it's highly likely that you'll find yourself driving a rear-driven S-Drive version of this convertible instead, which should feel more involving than any other mid-sized executive open-top model that you've driven, if that's the kind of experience that you're looking for. Super effective traction and stability systems uh, both keep those back wheels in check so that if you're not a driving enthusiast it'll all feel quite normal but if you are then the feeling of being propelled up the road by the back wheels as you exit a bend rarely fails to offer up a feeling of pleasure there's even some of the s drive feeling with the x drive four wheel drive system that the more powerful variants have to have and that's because uh, that system's programmed to keep you rear driven for most of the time of course, there isn't quite the same feeling of agility you'd get in an equivalent 4 Series Coupe. This convertible version does, after all, have to cart around an extra 150 kilos of weight, plus a slight loss of rigidity in the open top body structure is occasionally betrayed by the odd shimmy over undulating surfaces and a few more reverberations through the body shell when you encounter potholes and poorer tarmac tears. Uh, you would get the same, though, from obvious rivals and ride quality, although, again, predictably not quite as good as it is in the fixed top model, is slightly better than it is with the competitor cabarets that we've just been talking about. The driving experience is aided by the fact that feedback from the pleasantly tactile, chunky, three-spoke steering wheel is far better than you expect an electric system might offer. Weight through the helm builds in a way that makes it much easier to take every corner with just one fluid sweep of the wheel. Plus, all 4 Series convertibles now include BMW's variable sport steering, which is supposed to offer more response the more lock you apply. Now, personally, we think the advantages that this feature adds are slight, but they do complement the way that this car is so good at delivering more the more you ask from it. Just how much more, of course, depends on a number of factors, the first of which is your selection of modes from the standard driving experience system, the rocket switch for which you'll find down here by the gear stick. As well as altering steering, throttle and the stability control software, these modes, Eco Pro, Comfort and Sport, now alter gear shift timings on every 4 Series convertible because every model in the range must now have the brand's 8-speed ZF Auto gearbox with its steering wheel paddle shifters. The transmission now incorporates launch control for Grand Prix style getaways and uh, provided you've paid extra for the pricey optional M Sport Pro package or you choose one of the M performance trim levels, it includes an extra sprint function too, which adds an extra burst of power for more rapid overtaking. On a four-cylinder, four-series convertible model, another reason why you might want that optional M Sport Pro package is to get the adaptive M suspension setup that we think you'd ideally want in this car. And this deals with the issue that we mentioned earlier of the slightly fidgety ride over poor surfaces. 
the adaptive damping setup uh, that obviously copes with this much better than the standard passive M Sport suspension, uh, particularly in the driving experience drive mode systems comfort setting. And it also gets a fourth driving mode, a set and forget auto style option, which is badged adaptive. If your car has this, you'll probably end up selecting it nearly all the time, just as we've done. Uh, the advantage of doing that not only lies in your being relieved of the need to make uh, any decisions about driving setup, the computer software just does all that for you, it also lies in the way that predictive technology is introduced into the process. Uh, the system uses the sat-nav uh, to prime the car for upcoming hazards like sharp bends and junctions. It all works so smoothly that you're never really aware that so much is going on behind the scenes to make your journey smoother and more efficient. You're probably going to want to know a bit more about the engine range. As I mentioned earlier, the diesel engines and the three-litre six-cylinder petrol unit have been embellished with mild hybrid tech, which uses a 48-volt starter generator. Now, this provides for particularly intensive braking energy recuperation with an extra small battery installed to store the electricity that's generated. That battery not only supplies the electrically operated vehicle functions, but it also makes its energy available to generate additional drive power. Now for this purpose, the current flows back to the starter generator to provide an 11 horsepower electric boost during acceleration, although that is uh, difficult to sense in day-to-day -day driving. Otherwise, the engine range offered on the conventional models has a familiar look and a familiar throaty sound too if you pay extra for the active sound design pack, which also comes included as part of that optional M Sport Pro package. Uh, the mild hybrid 420D four-cylinder two-litre diesel variant that gains sequential twin turbo charging for extra mid-range punch. Uh, that unit develops 190 horsepower and 400 newton meters of torque that's enough to see 62 miles an hour from rest, flash by in just 7.6 seconds on the way to 147 miles an hour if you're quick with the steering wheel paddle shifters. Upgrade yourself to the 3 litre 6 cylinder unit of the 286 horsepower 430D and courtesy of 650 newton meters of shove you'll find the acceleration to 62 miles an hour time improved to 5.9 seconds on the way to an artificially limited 155 miles an hour maximum speed. Unlike with the 4 Series Coupe, those two standard diesel models come only in S-Drive rear-driven form. Uh, for an all-wheel driven uh, diesel 4 Series convertible, you'll have to choose the pricier M440D X-Drive derivative, which uses the same 3-litre engine in a 340 horsepower state of tune. That improves the sprint time to just 5.1 seconds. Apart from those three engines, the rest of the 4 Series convertible range uses petrol power, with most customers who don't choose the 420D ending up behind the wheel of the conventional rear drive only 420i, which offers 184 horsepower and makes 62 rest in 8.2 seconds on the way to 147 miles an hour. Now this model's non-electrified 2-litre four-cylinder power plant is lighter this time around and gains higher injection pressures, although you still have to rev it quite hard to access its full performance, although that's no hardship. Now the same engine is also offered in an uprated 258 HP state of tune in the alternative four-cylinder petrol model, the 430i, in which form the performance figures improved to 6.2 seconds and 155 miles an hour. For some 4 Series convertible buyers though, only the distinctive whale of a straight six petrol power plant will do. If that's you, then before you rush out to put your name down for the wild M4 competition flagship model, which now has standard X-Drive all-wheel drive and can, in G23 era form, put out a potent 510 horsepower, 60 horsepower more than before, spare a thought for the considerably more affordable M440i we're trying here, which features the 48 volt mild hybrid tech we mentioned earlier on. Like the M4, it gets X-Drive four-wheel drive and it uses basically the same three liter straight six twin turbo engine, but in a 347 HP state of tune, although it's still 40 HP more than the previous 440i and it's good enough to propel you to 62 in just 4.9 seconds on the way to a top speed that has to be artificially limited at 155 miles an hour. 
Also, like the M4, the M440i gets a standard fit M Sport differential, the same limited slip diff that you'll find on the M440D and offered as an option on the 430i model. This is a box worth ticking if you value the way that this feature can proactively distribute torque evenly to both rear wheels and compensate for the rotational speed difference between the inner and outer wheel as you power through each bend. Even without this kind of tech, and even if you're limited to a volume four-cylinder model, you'll find this car will tackle the turns with the infectious enthusiasm that we referenced earlier on. And that's aided by clever lift-related dampers which reduce body movement and sharpen corner turning. Most pricier modern executive models feature torque vectoring systems of some kind these days, uh, using electronic traction systems to vary drive torque between the driven wheels, but the BMW performance control setup is particularly effective. Or perhaps it just seems that way because you're always so clued into what's going on uh, beneath this car's wheels. A reaction to this G23 series model's steering actually hasn't been universally positive though. Initially it might seem very sharp and direct, but you adjust quite quickly and we've certainly no issue at all with it. Unless, rather unrealistically, you expect this electrically assisted setup to have the kind of feel you'd have enjoyed in the long forgotten days of hydraulic racks, you'll probably conclude, as we have, that the steering feedback on offer here is probably as good as you're going to get in the car of this kind. What all this boils down to is that the battle lines between this car and its closest Mercedes and Audi rivals, which to some extent had become rather indistinct, are now clear again once more. Uh, this G23 era 4 Series convertible BMW has restored the clear blue sky which used to exist between this model line and its closest C-Class and A5 Cabriolet competitors in terms of dynamic drive response. And at the same time, it's also caught up to those cars when it comes to things that were slightly lacking in the previous F33 generation 4 Series convertible model, principally in the areas of engine efficiency, safety standards and cabin technology. Refinements much improved too. Uh, you might not think that in a four-cylinder diesel at startup, but once on the move, whatever engine you choose, you'll find this car really is very quiet indeed when the roof's up. And it's admirably free from buffeting too when it's down, particularly if you're driving with the optional wind deflector fitted over the rear seats. In short, it's quite an achievement. If you like the looks and you happen to be shopping in this segment, then we think you'll like a great deal else about this car. BMW design chief Domagot Gukec must have heaved a sigh of relief when the company finally abandoned a metal folding roof system for this car. It's obviously much easier to produce eye-catching pavement presence when you don't have to stack a pallet full of metal panels behind the rear seat. And so it proves here the move to a fabric top for this second generation 4 Series design allows for a more distinctive interpretation of the low slung silhouette that's been long established as a signature feature of mid-sized BMW convertibles. We've now got a slightly larger piece of Bavarian real estate than was presented before. This Mark II G23 series design being 128 millimeters longer than its predecessor, a 10 millimeter lower roof height, and these three-dimensionally sculpted surfaces over the rear wheel arches, which usually house uh, 18 or 19 inch rims, give a more striking look. But the real story here is the retracting top which operates within 18 seconds at the press of a button, including on the move at speeds of up to 31 miles an hour. It's quite a piece of theater and it also works via the key fob. So if you're sipping a cappuccino in a coffee shop over the road from your car when the heavens open, you won't have to stir yourself if you've left it open to the elements. In an attempt to retain some of the strength of the previous hardtop, this roof incorporates large panel bow elements, a flush fitting glass rear window, several layers of insulation and a fabric cover available either in black or anthracite colours. Up front, there's no doubt about the main talking point, the more vertical upright kidney grille. It's intended to reference classic BMWs like the pre-war 328 sports car. It's a move that's evoked a mixed reaction from brand loyalists, but as the brand points out, until the 1980s, the grilles on BMWs were always more vertical than horizontal. Uh, Arrow-shaped bonnet creases and headlamp contours with U-shaped 
fiber optic light guides zero in on this feature, which has to rather awkwardly incorporate this centrally mounted number plate and is framed by three-dimensional surfacing. At the outer edges of the front apron, next to these slim LED fog lights, the vertically designed intakes for the air curtains, uh, they are supposed to accentuate the width of the car. And that's another frontal aspect that's something of an acquired taste. At the rear, the slim, darkened, full LED tail lamps aim to emphasize this G23 series design's 27 millimeter increase in width and lower center of gravity. Plus, potent looking twin exhausts are built into this black lower diffuser panel, which can, as here, be optionally trimmed in carbon fiber. Under the skin, the CLAR mixed steel and alloy platform, which underpinned the previous version of this car, is retained with its intelligent mix of steels and alloys. But BMW has tried to reduce its weight through greater use of aluminium, and that's used to fashion the bonnet, uh, the side panels and the doors. Uh, mind you, there was only so much weight saving that could be done, uh, given the need for extra front and rear bulkhead bracing uh, that brings the additional stiffness and the rigidity that's required to offset the lack of a fixed roof structure. The brand claims a 4% improvement in torsional rigidity this time around. Time to take a look inside with cabin access possible via your smartphone if you've specified the digital key option and you have the right kind of handset. Uh, the doors, as it turns out, are absolutely huge. These four series models feature the longest ones fitted to any BMW in current production. And as you pull them back, the shallow frameless windows click down out of their fittings, welcoming you into a cabin that BMW promises will bring some of the grand touring luxury of its big 8 Series convertible into this more affordable segment. It's certainly very nice indeed and a good deal more sophisticated than that of the previous generation model, although not as deliberately understated. Uh, some things are familiar though, this motorised belt buckler that hands you your belt buckle as you get in, and also the slightly lower driving stance which aims to differentiate this interior from that of a current BMW 3 Series. It positions you via unique and completely re-sculpted leather stitched sports seats uh, with contoured side bolsters. They're heated and powered as standard, and as an option, they can feature so-called warm air collars, which can lightly massage your neck with warm air when you're driving roof down on chilly days. Otherwise, the 4 Series cabin is exactly as it would be in a 3, which means there's a bit more silver trimming this time around to highlight the hexagon-shaped detailing that distinguishes BMW's current approach to interior design. The outer edges of the high-set centre console have knee pads to cater for a sporty driving style, and everything is now a bit more canted towards the driver. Uh, the start button has been repositioned next to this restyled auto gear stick, and the steering wheel now befits the ambiance of a slightly larger, more luxurious sports convertible that this car's become. Uh, there's no respite inside here, though, from the divisive look of the front grille if you don't happen to like it. A striking image of that appendage appears on the central screen when you alter the various individual drivetrain settings. Ah, oh, yes, screens. Uh, it's these displays, standard as part of BMW's live cockpit professional package, that you'll probably notice first once you've got comfortable in this car. A 12.3-inch monitor replaces the previous model's analog dials in the instrument cluster, and a bigger 10.25-inch center-dash iDrive infotainment display is now much better integrated into the center of the fascia. That instrument binnacle screen offers five customizable viewing options, although none of them provides a central pairing of circular dials that could be read simply at a glance, and one layout lacks a rev counter, which seems a bit heretical on a BMW. Uh, the graphics are classy, of course. It's just that some aspects of this setup's functionality still need a bit more thought back in Munich. For example, the virtual speedometer and rev counter gauges, which symmetrically frame its display, use opposite swinging needles that, to start with, can be visually confusing. And although you do get sat-nav mapping in the centre of this monitor, you can't expand the three-day navigation layout completely to fill it, as is possible with, say, Audi's virtual cockpit layout. We've no issues with the centre stack screen, though, which showcases the fact that BMW has matched 
and in some cases exceeded the current media connectivity class standard here. Uh, this advanced infotainment package includes what the brand calls an intelligent personal assistant. Now this is a supposed fount of all knowledge which responds to voiced questions uh, rather as the Alexa system, Siri on an Apple phone or the Google Assistant feature does on an Android phone uh, but here it's Hey BMW. Now BMW insists that this setup is rather cleverer than those ones. You can give it a name if you think that'll help you to bond with it better and the press kit tells us we can even ask it the meaning of life. It's more likely of course that you'll be using it to make day-to-day -day driving just a bit easier. If you tell it you're cold, it'll turn up the temperature. If you don't understand a particular feature, it'll trot out explanatory text from the online handbook. Or you might want it to check the oil level, or look for fuel stations along your route, or read out your text messages. This lower iDrive controller still sets the class standard for infotainment functionality. For example, it takes just a couple of nudges with it to set up just how much steering intervention you want out of the safety systems or whether you want that at all. And the system will then remember your preferences. Plus, if you're graduating on from the previous F33 generation 4 Series convertible model, then you'll be pleased to find that both the top of this capstan controller and the screen surface are now touch sensitive as standard. Now in an age where many rivals are dispensing with audio volume control knobs, we were very pleased to find one retained here. Uh, you'll quickly get to grips with the calm, measured graphics of this operating system 7.0 monitor 2. The layout is clear and logical. A sidebar gives you media, communication, navigation, car and apps options. Uh, those are also duplicated by buttons next to the iDrive controller. Uh, these shortcut options connect you into features like the DAB audio system, 4G LTE connectivity, connected sat-nav and Apple CarPlay smartphone mirroring. All of that is standard fare. There's an awful lot of connected drive digital stuff too. A wide range of BMW vehicle apps for example which give you access to things like news reports and weather forecast. And a concierge service which connects you through to an operator to help with journeying information. Plus the system can remotely update its own software and there's also what BMW calls an open mobility cloud that via a clever My BMW app can allow you to interact with the car when you're not in it. For example, allowing you to remotely view it in 3D. Uh, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone mirroring is now standard without limit, not before time, although you do have to pay extra for wireless functionality. Uh, there are other media system caveats too. As usual, many of the Munich makers' digital services remain life limited before becoming chargeable, some for three years and others like BMW Music which brings your favourite soundtracks into the car and Microsoft Office 365 which syncs in your emails and your calendar for just three months. To some extent you can't help feeling that it's a case of the brand giving with one hand and taking away with the other. Are there other issues? Uh, not many. We don't think it's acceptable to have to pay extra for lumbar support on a car of this price. Plus, front wheel visibility is a bit compromised by these wide A pillars and as usual on a convertible, when the top's up, your over the shoulder view is awful and even when it's down like this, your view is slightly restricted thanks to a boot lid with a leading edge that's uh, rather difficult to see. This issue though is mitigated somewhat by a whole bank of technology that'll help you to slot into spaces, all round parking sensors and the rear view camera are standard, as is a reversing assistant which activates with green or red strips on the steering wheel spokes and automatically reverses you along whatever path you'd previously taken forward. As an option you can add a parking assistant to steer you into tight bays and you can also pay extra to include the optional drive recorder package that we have here which uses the various driver assistance cameras around the car to record and store video footage from different points around the vehicle. So if you ever should have an impact and it's your fault, you'll be able to instantly watch it back and inwardly cringe. This well-specified test car has much more of course, including a Harman Kardon audio upgrade and a head-up display now with a 70% larger projection area. Uh, there's even a selectable caring car feature on the central infotainment screen which uses music, lighting and the climate control in a three minute long session that will either vitalise or relax you. 
yes, it is a gimmick. Uh, yes, you'll be pleased to have it after the kind of long day at the office that made it possible for you to run this convertible 4 Series in the first place. What you can't have is the gesture control feature for the infotainment screen that is available on the equivalent 4 Series Coupe, although that's no great loss because, in our experience, this feature's functionality tends to be rather hit and miss. Getting comfortable is easy thanks to loads of adjustment for the seat and wheel. The amount of rearward seat travel you get is particularly generous, although we were disappointed to find that, unlike on the coupe model, you can't pay extra for lumbar support. Uh, build quality from the Dingelfing German plant is predictably faultless, and as we suggested earlier, it all feels very high-end, helped by plenty of piano black trim and nice little touches like this contrast stitching on the binnacle cowl, the centre console and the door cards. When it comes to cabin practicality, uh, BMW does achieve the class standard, but no more. Both the door bins and the glove box are compartmentalised and they're averagely sized with bottle holders. This lidded area at the base of the centre stack reveals a couple of cup holders along with a 12 volt port and a USB point. Uh, plus there's a wireless phone charging mat if you specified one. A USB-C point can be found in this good sized, nicely lit, lidded box between the seats. An overhead sunglasses compartment that's missing but you get a flock lined cubby by the driver's right knee and ticket clips on the sun visors. Okay, let's take a look in the back. Now it's obviously going to be slightly more awkward to reach the rear fuse if the roof's up. Uh, BMW markets this as a four seat convertible, but the previous generation version of this model only just about qualified on that score, uh, hence perhaps the need for this replacement model's slight increase in length. Uh, now you're not going to be able to use these back seats at all if you fitted the optional wind deflector uh, that usefully reduces roof down turbulence on the move when there's only two of you up front but let's assume that you haven't got that in place. Uh, reaching these back seats it's aided by these electrically operable front chairs. Now they thoughtfully return to their original position once they've been used uh, so the driver doesn't have to reset them uh, every time someone climbs into the rear. Even so, it is still a bit of a squeeze through a relatively narrow gap to get into the back. Mind you, that is true of all cars in this segment and once you're in, there's a useful increase in legroom over what was provided before thanks to this G23 series design's 41 millimetre increase in wheelbase length. That means there's actually now just about enough legroom for an adult to sit here without feeling really cramped. Uh, when the top's raised, there's actually a fraction more headspace too. That's despite this Mark II model's lower roof height, although taller folk will still need to lean forward slightly or sit with their heads brushing the ceiling. You get a couple of cup holders back here, but there's very little storage space provided. You don't get a central armrest, just this uh, mid-mounted tray. Occupants are favoured, however, with individual vents and climate controls for the standard three-zone system with twin USB-C ports just below. Finally, let's take a look in the boot. Now, this is where the sales proposition of the first-generation metal folding roof 4-series convertible rather fell apart. That car provided just 220 litres of cargo space when the panels were folded back. Less than most Superman is and certainly insufficient for the kind of uh, long, grand touring journeys that this car is supposed to have been designed for. Uh, with a fabric top fitted instead, you'd expect this G23 series design to be much better in that regard. But just how much better? Well, let's see. As with the coupe, you have the option to specify a comfort access feature, which allows you to open the trunk lid by swiping your foot beneath the bumper. If key in pocket, you approach the car laden down with bags. And once open, it reveals a large but shallow space that's now increased to 300 litres. That's 140 litres less than you get in a 4 Series coupe, and more pertinently, 20 litres less than you get top down from a rival Audi A5 Cabriolet. But it is now 40 litres more than you get with the roof in this configuration with the Mercedes C-Class Cabriolet. With the top up and no need to store this folded roof sandwich, things would obviously improve, although not by perhaps as much as you might hope, the 385 litre total being 15 litres better than the previous generation model could manage. Uh, still, this is now 5 litres better than that uh, competing Audi, and it's 30 litres better than the rival Mercedes. 
The boot has a practically square shape and it's smartly trimmed with a lining fashion from natural fibres, but you have to lump your items over quite a high lip to access the space that's provided. Uh, there are four tie-down points and there's a bit of extra room beneath the floor, although uh, that's only because BMW insists that buyers should do without any sort of spare wheel. And that is a problem uh, with the smallest 18-inch wheels that can be had on this car. And that's because with those rims, run-flat tyres can't be had as an option. If you need more room, the backrest doesn't split, but a ski hatch is provided as standard. Uh, this rather hidden catch in the corner of the boot drops the backrest. Uh, the hatch allows longer items like skis to be slid forward into the cabin without disturbing two rear-seated folk. BMW's decision to restrict trim levels this time around to M Sport variants and to standardise auto transmission, an 8-speed Steptronic box with launch control, has meant that the entry point for 4 Series convertible ownership has risen quite a lot. When we first tested the previous F33 Series design back in 2014, this model line was priced from around £35,000. But from the launch of this second generation G23 Series Mark II model in autumn 2020, around £46,000 became the sum necessary to get a place on the lowest rung of the ownership ladder. The mainstream range rises in price up to around £60,000. That represents a price premium of around £5,500 over the equivalent 4 Series Coupe. Even if you compare like with like, M Sport trim, old and new, there's still a price hike of well over £5,000. Although, to be fair to BMW, this only reflects the kinds of figures that direct competitors are charging too, as we'll see in a moment. If budget's of little importance to you, then you'll have your eye on the top M4 competition flagship model, which now gets 510 horsepower with X-Drive four-wheel drive and prices at around £82,000. If you can't quite stretch to that though, much the same engine and drivetrain package can be had at a saving of over £20,000 in the form of this M440i X-Drive model, the only four-wheel drive variant in the mainstream range, which presents the M4's 3-litre twin-turbo 6 in more accessible 374 horsepower form. It's more likely though, of course, that you'll be perusing one of the humbler variants, all offered with a choice of either base M Sport trim or for around £5,000 more with the Ritzia M Sport Pro Edition package. Engine-wise, quite possibly, you'll have settled on one of the two rear-driven 2-litre petrol derivatives, either the entry-level 4-cylinder 420i 184 HP model or the more potent 258 HP 430i variant, the only other option is a diesel. Yes, BMW does still offer black pump fueled options with this car, primarily the brand's familiar 190 horsepower 2 litre twin turbo unit, which commands a price premium of around £2,300 over the petrol 420i. But here, unlike with the coupe model, it can't be ordered with optional extra four wheel drive. Around £3,000 more gets you the six cylinder diesel power plant, which is used in the alternative. 430D, a variant which in coupe form can only be had paired to the X-Drive system, but with this convertible comes only with rear-wheel drive. Uh, you do get the X-Drive system though in the top diesel, the M440D, which uses the same 3-litre six-cylinder engine but in a 340 horsepower state of tune. It's probably worth mentioning that this 4 Series convertible must now, going forward, assume the role of BMW's entry-level Cabrio model following the brand's decision not to replace the 2 Series convertible, a car that, at the time of this test in summer 2021, was gently coasting down towards retirement. The only other drop top in the Munich Makers lineup is the 8 Series convertible, and that is priced from around £80,000. It's this 4 Series convertible, though, that's our focus here today, a car that really only has two direct rivals, Cabriolet versions of the Mercedes C-Class and the Audi A5. At first glance, directly comparable mainstream variants of those two models seem both to usefully undercut this BMW on price. Think around £2,500 less for comparable versions of the Mercedes, while a base petrol version of the Audi would save you around £4,000. Although with a base diesel A5 Cabriolet, uh, the price gap would narrow to around £1,500. BMW in response points out that this uh, simply reflects its decision not to offer a base spec level of trim with the second generation version of this 4 Series model. 
Sure enough, a comparable S-Line trimmed A5 Cabriolet 40 TDI diesel costs much the same as a 420D M Sport equivalent and comparably specified AMG Line Edition premium versions of the Mercedes actually cost slightly more than their 4 Series convertible M Sport model equivalents. There is another mid-sized cabrio contender in this sector, but we don't think many typical 4 Series convertible customers will be minded to consider it. We're talking about the wild, extravagant and frankly rather in-your-face Ford Mustang, which prices from around £48,000 or around 50000 in preferable V8 form. Mercedes also offers a Cabriolet version of its E-Class model, but it's much more softly set up than a 4 Series and it retails at a slightly higher price point in the 50 to 75,000 pound bracket. All of which means that if you really want a car in this segment, you might very well end up really wanting a 4 Series convertible, in which case you're going to want to know what your money will buy you in terms of standard equipment. So let's see. Now the base M Sport model comes with 18-inch M double-spoke bicolor jet black alloy wheels and high-gloss shadow line exterior trim. The most important benefits of the M Sport upgrade, though, are felt inside, where there's Vanaska leather upholstery in a choice of five colors, aluminium tetragon inlays, an instrument panel in stitched Sensitec man-made leather, and the thick M Sport steering wheel that BMW folks seem to like so much. There's also passive M Sport suspension, a bit firm, so try before you buy, and a variable sport steering system, which is supposed to offer more response the more lock you apply. Plus, of course, as you'd expect for the money being asked here, you get a full roster of luxury segment features, full LED headlamps, acoustic side glass, ambient lighting, a through-loading 40-20-40 split folding rear seat back, and three-zone automatic air conditioning. There's loads of help for slotting this car into tight bays too. Not only all-round sensors and a reversing camera, but also a reversing assistant that when you return after parking up, can automatically reverse along whatever path you'd previously taken forward. In addition, pretty much all the stuff you'd expect from a premium executive model at this price is present and correct too. So tick off auto headlamps and wipers, power folding heated mirrors, an alarm and LED illumination for the tail lamps and the front fog lights, along with cruise control, an anti-dazzle rear view mirror and the usual BMW driving experience driving mode setup with its comfort, eco pro and sport settings. Now BMW has additionally standardized the lovely welcome light carpet which illuminates the ground around the front doors when you get into the car or step out of it at night. Annoyingly though, a space saver spare wheel isn't available and run flat tyres can't be had with the 18 inch wheels of M Sport trim either. Perhaps the most significant element of M Sport trim is the brand's sophisticated BMW Live cockpit professional arrangement that gives you a large 10.25 inch centre dash screen and a further even bigger 12.3 inch control display to replace the conventional dials in the instrument cluster. Also included is what BMW calls an intelligent personal assistant, which works a bit like the Siri or Google Assistant systems that you might use on your phone and is there to answer questions that you can voice to the car as you drive it. Plus, of course, there's 3D navigation, Bluetooth and a high-quality DAB audio setup. In addition, the brand now, at last, offers the Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone integration systems as standard without time limit so you can easily use your favorite apps in the car. As brand loyalists would expect, this second generation 4 Series convertible includes plenty of the brand's really clever digital connectivity features too, including the full suite of BMW connected package professional services, uh, things like real-time traffic information, which warns you of congestion along your chosen route, and connected parking, which offers multi-storey and on-street parking information in selected cities in the UK and in Europe. Uh, there is also BMW's concierge service, which at the press of a button will give you direct access to an operator who will be able to answer almost any question about your journey as you're driving it. And the connected package professional setup now includes connected music, which offers unlimited streaming of millions of songs into the vehicle from Spotify. In-car experiences are one-shot cabin modes, which are able to instantly adapt the interior ambiance to suit your mood. Plus, there's the company's suite of BMW vehicle apps that gives you access to things like news reports, weather forecasts for up to four days ahead, and information on highway tolls. 
In addition, the system can remotely update itself with fresh features and mapping upgrades too. And of course, it'll read out your text messages to you. We'll also mention teleservices, which can decide when a garage visit is required and automatically book it. And as a customer of this Munich maker, you'll get a three month trial of a connected teaser package, which gives you BMW music. And that allows you to export your favorite soundtracks into the car. If you've owned a BMW before, then you might be familiar with the standard remote services package, which allows you to control many aspects of your vehicle's operation via your smartphone. And you'll maybe also recognize the downloadable My BMW app. And that can learn your mobility routines, it can read your calendar, and it can even prompt you when to leave for scheduled journeys. It'll get familiar with your most frequently traveled routes, and it'll memorize them as future destinations. Plus, the app will also help you to find your car if you've gone and forgotten where you parked it. And it can also remotely lock or unlock the doors. All of this is included with standard M Sport trim, but if you're not able to stretch to this more potent M Performance M440i variant and you're sticking with the base spec level, we think you really ought to think carefully about finding an extra £2,500 to get yourself the optional M Sport Pro Pack, which adds in some extra key features we think you'll really want on this car. In our view, the most important of those is adaptive M suspension, which works through the various drive experience drive modes. It adds an extra one, adaptive, and particularly with the comfort setting selected, it allows you to take the firm edge of this car's ride demeanor over poorer surfaces. Other pack elements that you'll appreciate include the sprint mode, which gives you a quick extra burst of power for sharp overtakes, uh, greater stopping power from the M Sport braking system, that's showcased by red calipers, a throatier engine note from the Active Sound Design Pack and the fact that the larger 19-inch wheel rims come fitted with run-flat tyres. Plus, the M Sport Pro package also includes M Sport seat belts and a wider range of the brand's individual high-gloss Shadowline exterior trim elements. With the 430i variant, the M Sport Pro package gives you the brand's M Sport Differential 2, which shunts torque across the back axles between the rear wheels for greater cornering traction. For the desirable M Performance M440i xDrive and M440d xDrive models, think in terms of what you get with M Sport trim and the M Sport Pro package, plus a few extra nice to have details, namely the standardization of the M Sport differential, plus freeform exhaust tailpipe finishes and a cooler cerium gray finish for the air breathers, the front kidney grill, the mirror caps and the model designation badge work. There's also an upgraded hi-fi loudspeaker audio system. As for the top M4 competition flagship version, well, that's set apart from this M440i M performance variant by bicolor black M double spoke forged alloy wheels, 19 inches at the front and 20 inches at the rear, plus a black finish for the rear diffuser, the rear spoiler, and the M Sport exhaust system. Inside an M4, there are embossed powered M Sport seats trimmed in softer stitched merino leather, plus carbon fiber trim, an M leather multifunctional steering wheel, and an M head-up display. Drive stuff for the M4 includes M Steptronic transmission with drive logic, an active M differential, M compound brakes, and the extra driving modes of the M Drive professional package. Our focus here, though, is on the more mainstream 4 Series convertible models. If you're looking at one of those and you want to embellish things with a few well-chosen extras, what will your dealer be able to offer to tempt you? Well, you'll almost certainly want the two cabrio-only options, the rear wind deflector, which sits over the rear seats and reduces buffeting at speed, and the warm air collar, which adds vents into the front seats, which can lightly massage your neck with warm air on chilly days when you're driving roof down. Uh, we can't really see why you'd want this car without either of those options. And at resale time, of course, a second buyer is certainly going to want your car to be fitted with them. Uh, you may also want to pay some extra money for the alternative colour fabric roof. There's only one other shade on offer, and that's grey anthracite silver fleck. Beyond that, we've already mentioned what should probably be your starting point here, the M Sport Pro Pack. 
But what if we want to go further? Well, let's kick off our pack perusal with the visibility package, which for £1,500 more includes a high beam assistant, which will automatically dip your headlights at night. Plus, you also get BMW's piercing blue-themed laser lights, which give you a beam range of 600 metres. If you're tempted by that, then you'll probably also want to look at the optional technology package, which for around £1,900 more gets you a head-up display, enhanced Bluetooth with wireless charging, an upgraded Harman Kardon loudspeaker audio system, and the in-car Wi-Fi, which offers a high-speed LTE internet connection for up to 10 devices. The Alternative Technology Plus package we have here gets you all the technology pack features along with the full contents of the Driving Assistant Professional Camera Safety package and we'll cover that off for you uh, when we get on to talking about safety. Otherwise, the Technology Plus package is all about parking. It includes BMW's Parking Assistant Plus, remote 3D view, surround view camera system. Uh, the cameras for that are also employed in another clever feature and that's the brand's drive recorder. This is like a dash cam, except it's a lot more sophisticated. The drive recorder system uses inbuilt cameras to record video footage from different points around the vehicle before storing the event and crash recordings so they can be either watched later on the control display or exported via the USB port. Recordings can be up to 40 seconds in length. Uh, for accident playback, you get 20 seconds before the impact and the 20 seconds after it. If luxury is more your thing than technology, there's a comfort package that for around £1,350 more gives you the two key features we mentioned earlier, the wind deflector and the warm air collar seat heating, plus a few other nice-to-have elements, steering wheel heating, uh, comfort access keyless entry, including a powered boot lid you can activate with a wave of your foot beneath the bumper, and also BMW's extended storage pack, which gives you some extra storage features, a cargo bay net, seat bag nets, uh, bag hooks, an extra 12-volt socket in the boot, and so on. If you like some of the features just mentioned, but you don't want to stretch to one of the pricey packs, then you'll find a number of them can be ordered individually if your 4 Series convertible doesn't already have them, uh, including the M Sport braking system and the Parking Assistant Plus surround view camera system. You can also place an individual order for sun protection glass, a heated steering wheel, the Harman Kardon audio system upgrade, in-car Wi-Fi and enhanced Bluetooth with a wireless charging mat. OK, on to aesthetic upgrades. Uh, more options are available to you here. For standard M Sport models, BMW's individual lights shadow line option includes black mirror caps and extra elements of shadow line exterior trim. Uh, this is also included in the bespoke shadow line plus pack available to M440i customers, which additionally incorporates further extended shadow line exterior trim and a jet black finish for the 19 inch wheels. M440i customers are also offered the M Carbon exterior styling pack we have fitted here, which coats the rear diffuser, the air breather, and the mirror caps in carbon fiber. It's a nice finishing touch. Finally, on the subject of optional packs, we will mention too that customers for the top M4 competition variant get a set of bespoke ones to choose from Comfort, M Carbon, Visibility, Technology Plus, M Pro, and Ultimate. Right, what about aesthetic options across the 4 Series convertible range? Well, to start with, bear in mind that unless you want this BMW in the only solid colour available, Alpine White, you'll need to pay your dealer more for one of the offered metallic shades. Up for this M440i variant, and you can also have one of the brand's pricier individual colours, like this test car's Dravit Grey. With M Sport trim, you can opt for a 19-inch wheel upgrade too. M440i customers can individually specify the jet black finish for the 19-inch wheels that we mentioned as well. You want to get the interior trim to your taste too. Let's start with the mainstream M Sport models. With these, the usual black leather upholstery can be had with either grey or, as in this case, with blue stitching. You can have your leather in oyster grey or Takora red. All of this is within the price as would be a switch from the standard aluminium tetragon trim inlays to aluminium mesh effect ones. BMW will, though, charge you £500 more to switch to individual piano black inlays. If, though, you've stretched to this M Performance M440i model, you'll get a wider range of interior customization options. For the seats, there's an extra cognac brown finish with mocha stitching, 
Or if you can find nearly £1,000 more, you can have softer BMW individual extended merino leather upholstery with distinctive quilted stitching and a choice of black, ivory white or Fiona red and black colours. Even softer full merino leather upholstery is available in these shades if you can extend your spend to £2,750 more. Two additional extra cost trim inlay options are available for M440i customers too. Individual aluminium fabric and carbon fibre. As for practical options across the 4 Series convertible range, we'd want the luggage compartment mat and possibly the all-weather floor mats for muddier months. Uh, you might also like to add a tow bar, which would enable you to add a rear bike carrier. Uh, BMW additionally offers an advanced car eye dash cam. As usual, it would also be wise to include BMW's optional Trackstar stolen vehicle tracking system. OK, enough with standard kit and options. Let's go on to consider safety provision. BMW wants to assure us that this G23 series design is intrinsically very safe. The body's rigid structure is stiffened further by the addition of such features as convertible specific bracing and aluminium shear panel at the bottom of the front end and side skirts with extremely high torsional rigidity. As usual with an executive segment convertible, this model has a purpose-built uh, roll-over protection system consisting of two cartridges which are fully retracted behind the rear seats and therefore invisible. If a rollover is imminent, then these cartridges are pyrotechnically fired, whereupon they shoot out to provide a survival space together with the A-pillars. Otherwise, safety provision here is the same as it is with the equivalent 4 Series Coupe or Grand Coupe model, or indeed with any other mid-sized BMW. The brand has taken a step forward in that area in recent years. As recently as 2017, with the updated version of the previous F23 generation version of this car, BMW didn't offer any kind of autonomous braking system as standard on this 4 Series convertible. That's the sort of thing that we've long had as standard on many family runabouts. Uh, this time around, though, BMW groups its main camera-driven safety features in the Active Guard Plus intelligent safety package, and that's familiar from other models, the key element of which, as you might expect, is autonomous braking, or as the Munich maker calls it, front collision warning with city braking. Now, this system works as these kind of setups usually do. At over 30 miles an hour, the vehicle scans the road ahead for potential accident hazards, and if one's detected, you'll be warned, and the brakes will be preconditioned for uh, maximum effectiveness. Uh, should you be travelling at under 30 miles an hour and you're not responding to a detected hazard, uh, the brakes will automatically be applied and that reduces the severity of any resulting accident and hopefully alleviates it altogether. There are two other standard Active Guard Plus features, lane departure warning with steering impulse that alerts you if you cross lane delineating lines and speed limit information pictures road signs as you pass them and displays them on the dash. As well as all that, this BMW has been engineered with cleverly integrated safety electronics which deploy the right restraint systems in the right sequence at the optimum moment and with the required effect for the type and severity of the collision. Of course, there are the usual twin front and side bags too, plus a driver's knee bag. As you expect, there are front and rear ISOFIX child seat fastenings and also the usual electronic assistance for traction and stability control, primarily DSC Plus stability control and DTC traction control. There's a trailer stabilisation function which will stop trailer sway if you have a trailer fitted and hill start assistant to stop you from drifting backwards on uphill junctions. Uh, there's plenty of braking peace of mind too with the ABS system supplemented by fading compensation, CBC, that's cornering brake control and the neat brake drying system that keeps the brake discs free of moisture in wet weather. Panic stops, they're aided by a brake assist system and they're advertised to following motorists by dynamic brake lights that flash a bright warning. You also get an active bonnet to minimise injuries in the nightmare scenario of a pedestrian collision and a multi-collision braking function that in the event of an impact with a solid object or another vehicle will keep brake pressure applied until you come to a complete stop. Tire pressure monitoring is standard too.
Another neat safety feature fitted as standard across the range is the attentiveness assistant, which monitors you for signs of drowsiness. Uh, we'll also highlight the standard BMW emergency call with teleservices system, which in an accident can automatically alert the emergency services. Now this system not only gives them your exact GPS location, but it also provides recovery personnel with information on your speed at point of impact, how hard the seat belts were pulled, how many airbags burst and so on. So if you were to have a crash, it'd all mean not only that the emergency teams would know exactly where you were, but also that they would arrive on the scene more prepared and more ready to get you to safety than they could ever otherwise be, a potentially life-saving difference. The setup's now been further improved to also automatically activate after low-speed collisions below the threshold for airbag deployment, immediately after the impact flashing up an iDrive screen message offering to contact BMW's accident assistance service directly. If you want more in terms of camera-driven safety tech, you're going to have to stump up for the extra cost driving assistant professional pack. Uh, we have that here, and that has to be had as part of the Technology Plus package that we mentioned earlier on. Now, that means that this enhanced safety pack isn't cheap, uh, whacking £3,650 more at the time this car's launch. Still, it does include the choicest parts of BMW's safety camera and autonomous driving technology, as you're about to hear. Now, the autonomous driving part of the driving assistant professional pack lies primarily with two elements. There's active cruise control with approach control, and that's there to regulate the distance to the vehicle in front, and it's able, if necessary, to slow you right down to a stop and then start you off again. It incorporates a radar-based approach control function, which senses other traffic around you and can adapt throttle and brakes accordingly. But the real highlight of this optional driving assistant professional pack is BMW's now improved steering and lane control assistant, which takes its bearings from road markings and vehicles driving ahead through uh, using data from a trifocal camera and a front range radar, which enables it to work with the driver to help centre the car in the detected lane with corrective steering input. The setup can make corrective steering interventions at speeds of up to 130 miles an hour, although you do have to still keep your hands on the wheel at all times. We found that it works particularly well in heavy traffic, especially now that it's been updated to include the brand's latest active navigation tech. This system uses navigation data to spot in advance when a lane change will be required, and in preparation, the system will automatically adjust the car's speed to make it easier to steer into a suitable gap in the adjacent lane. We mentioned that the Driving Assistant Professional Pack also includes a whole suite of BMW's latest camera safety tech, so let's brief you on that. Uh, there's Active Lane Guidance, which adds subtle steering lock to ease you back to where you ought to be if the lane departure warning system that we mentioned earlier on detects that you've inadvertently veered uh, over your carriage lane delineating lines. In addition, as part of this extra cost pack, you'll also get BMW's lane keeping assistant with active side collision protection package, uh, which incorporates side collision warning and lane change warning, all of which stops you from pulling out when there's a vehicle in your blind spot and adds in light steering intervention that will ease you back to where you ought to be on the road should you drift offline. Uh, we also like the pack's crossing traffic warning front. Uh, that's a feature which alerts you to oncoming vehicles if you're trying to edge out of a junction and you can't completely see traffic coming at you from either side. Uh, there is also automatic speed limit assist, which works with the traffic sign recognition system to recognise speed limits and prevent you from exceeding them. We haven't finished yet either. The Driving Assistant Professional Pack also includes an evasion aid that gives you extra steering assistance in critical situations where it's still possible to avoid an accident. Say, for example, someone suddenly pulls out in front of you or you suddenly have to make a uh, dramatic lane change to avoid slow-moving traffic. Plus, there's also crossroads warning. Uh, that incorporates giveaway warning, which alerts you to traffic coming at you from the sides at a crossroads. And finally, as the name suggests, wrong way warning makes an absolutely enormous fuss if you forget yourself and end up going the wrong way down a one-way street. It's all very reassuring.
for all the talk of roof electronics, uh, big horsepower, muscular styling, and clever tech, in some ways the most impressive thing about this 4 Series convertible is its cost effectiveness. Now, for some reason, you don't expect a car with class leading drive dynamics to be also class leading in terms of its running cost efficiency, but this one delivers just that, which is just as well because the business buyers who primarily populate this sector uh, they are notoriously unforgiving of cars which sit below standard in that area. You can love this Munich model's pavement presence or enjoy the way that it carves its way through your favourite back doubles all you like, but if it doesn't stack up on the balance sheet then you're very unlikely to get the nod from your accountant or perhaps your other half which will enable you to run one. Anyway, for the time being anyway, it does, in CO2 terms anyway, which is the most important factor. And the substantial weight saving that's been achieved this time around certainly helps here, although it is worth pointing out that arrival second generation Audi A5 Cabriolet, which is a design that's been on sale since 2017, remains around 20 kilos lighter still. Now for reference, the other key class rival, the Mercedes C-Class Cabriolet, is typically around 40 kilos heavier than a comparable uh, 4 Series convertible. But, of course, a good efficiency showing is about more than just light weight. Probably the key improvement with this Mark II G23 era 4 Series convertible has been the extension across the range of the Bavarian brand's hybrid technology. 48 volt mild hybrid technology in this case. Uh, the company has its PHEV plug-in tech ready and waiting, but at the time of this test in summer 2021, hadn't yet made it available to 4 Series customers, although we are expecting it probably will. Anyway, the much less effective 48 volt to mild hybrid technology that you can have uh, features on the 420D and 430D diesel variants, as well as on the M440i xDrive petrol model that we're trying here. It works as mild hybrid systems these days usually do. Uh, fitting a powerful 48 volt starter generator and a tiny second battery enables a significant increase in the amount of brake energy that can be regenerated and stored. Uh, this energy is used not only to supply the electrical system but also to lighten the combustion engine's workload and to boost power. The starter generator also increases efficiency by assisting the engine when driving at constant speeds. As a result of all that, here are the WLTP rated stats that will get the approval of your accountant or company fleet manager. Best possible figures are quoted based on M Sport trimmed models with the smallest available 18 inch wheel size. Now, the bigger 19 inch rims that you'll probably want will obviously impact these stats a bit though. Anyway, we'll start with the rear driven mild hybrid 420D diesel variant which in this second generation form uh, features sequential multi-stage turbocharging and uh, uh, remains a popular derivative in the lineup and that's primarily because it can deliver up to 57.6 miles per gallon on the combined cycle and up to 129 grams per kilometer of CO2 so benefit in kind tax uh, is rated in the 29 to 31 percent range. These are stats good enough to significantly improve on the returns possible with both of this car's key rivals, the Mercedes C220D Cabriolet, which manages 52.3 mpg and 141 grams per kilometre, and the Audi A5 Cabriolet 40 TDI S-Tronic, which manages up to 48.7 mpg and 152 grams per kilometre. For completion, we'll also give you the figures for the six-cylinder diesel variants. The 430D manages up to 52.3 miles per gallon and up to 141 grams per kilometer. And the M440D xDrive delivers up to 44.8 mpg and up to 165 grams per kilometer. All four series convertible diesels uh, use BMW's blue performance technology. Uh, now that includes a particulate filter, an oxidation catalyst, an NOx absorption catalyst and an SCR catalyst with AdBlue injection. Uh, you'll probably be familiar with AdBlue by now because most of the modern Euro 6 diesel power plants use it. It's a urea additive which mixes with the hot exhaust gases from the engine. As the urea combines with those fumes, it turns many of the harmful chemicals into nothing more noxious than water and nitrogen, and uh, that's what makes up most of the Earth's atmosphere. Tell all that to the bar stall experts who talk as if diesel cars are alone responsible for smogging up our cities. 
these people will certainly point you towards petrol power and given the current zeitgeist and government tax disincentives to fuel from the black pump, you'd certainly want to consider it if the running cost difference wasn't too great. So, is that the case? Well, uh, you'll have to decide. The rear-driven base 420i petrol model does without the 48 volt tech, but it still manages up to 41.5 mpg and up to 154 grams per kilometer. So, better in kind tax is rated in the 34 to 36% range. These are readings that fall only slightly with the 430i variant that uses a 258 horsepower version of the derivative's uh, same 2 litre petrol engine. With the 430i, you're looking at up to 40.4 mpg and up to 160 grams per kilometre of CO2. Either way, drive a bit harder as we've been doing and you're probably looking at a day-to-day -day return of around 30 mpg. For the six-cylinder M440i X-Drive mild hybrid model we've been trying here, the fuel figure is rated at up to 35.3 mpg, but the CO2 reading, that falls sharply to a best of 182 grams per kilometre. All the figures we've just quoted for all the available engine choices assume that the car is being run in the driving experience system's most frugal Eco Pro mode. In this setting, the air conditioner and the power steering only work when required to save energy, and what's called a proactive driving assistant is activated. Now, you don't get an Eco Pro setting on the top 510 horsepower 3 litre petrol M4 competition variant, which is one reason why the figures for that model are quite a way behind those of the similarly engined M440i. An M4 is rated at 27.7 mpg and up to 231 grams per kilometre of CO2, which to give you some point of reference is quite a lot better than its key rival, the Mercedes AMG C63 Cabriolet. Whatever kind of 4 Series convertible power plant you choose, it'll benefit from the Munich Maker's various efficient dynamics technologies. They're there to keep running costs in check. Uh, there's an engine auto stop start system, as you'd expect. And at highway speeds, the cruise control can seamlessly decouple the engine from the transmission to reduce friction and to consequently save fuel. Uh, the brand has also put a great deal of effort into aerodynamics and they've given this G23 series design a redesigned active air flap system in the front grille plus an almost completely sealed underbody which works with the front air curtain slits that channel air more smoothly over the aerodynamically optimized wheels. Of course, the driver will also need to do his or her part and you'll want to keep an eye on how frugal you've been in your recent mileage. Uh, a journey data part of the central dash infotainment screen's driving information section shows a useful fuel graph to brief you on that. The same section also has an energy flow graphic that shows you at any time what's being powered by what. And there's a driving style analysis screen which uh, when the Eco Pro mode is activated uh, will rate your driving with marks out of five for anticipation and acceleration and it works out the extra mileage range that any more frugal driving has gained you. What else? Well, in the vehicle status section of the centre dash screen, there's a general check control which allows you to monitor the status of various vehicle functions. Plus, there are separate screens which allow you to specifically oversee things like tyre pressure and the current levels of engine oil and on the diesel model, the AdBlue Additive 2. You can check on service requirements as well and you can also use a clever teleservices feature that comes as part of the BMW Connected Drive services which you can access through the iDrive infotainment screen. Now via this, uh, before each service appointment is due, your 4 Series can automatically put in a teleservices call to your nominated BMW service centre, uh, complete with detailed information on vehicle condition. Uh, you'll then get a call uh, and that's to arrange a service appointment and that's something that you will have already budgeted for if at the point of uh, your original purchase you opted for one of the two fixed cost service inclusive or service inclusive plus packages. Now they cover you for five years or 50,000 miles. With these, after a one-off payment, which can be as little as around £400, you'll have the peace of mind of knowing that all normal work on the car has been paid for during that period, and that includes items like oil, spark plugs and filters. What else might you need to know? Uh, well, because all 4 Series convertibles now cost over £40,000, your vehicle excise duty will cost £450 a year for the first five years of ownership. 
bear that in mind when you're adding in extras. Residual values, well, we expect the depreciation on this second generation 4 Series convertible to be pretty similar to that of its direct predecessor, which would mean a very competitive retained worth of about 45% after three years and 60,000 miles. Onto the warranty package, uh, BMW's warranty only lasts for three years, but it does include an emergency breakdown service, and at least it isn't mileage limited, uh, unlike the comparable package that you get as standard with a rival Audi. Uh, you can, of course, extend the warranty with either monthly or annual payments. Uh, there is a three-year paintwork warranty too, and the usual 12-year anti-corrosion guarantee. As for insurance groups, well, think in terms of ratings about three to four groups higher than an equivalent 4 Series Coupe. Uh, that means you're looking at Group 36 or 37 for a 420D, uh, 43 or 44 for a 430D. Uh, moving to petrol power, a 420i, uh, that starts at either Group 33 or 34, while for a 430i, the ratings are Group 38 or 39. For this M440i xDrive model, it's Group 43. So at last, a mid-sized convertible BMW worthy of being, well, a BMW. Having wasted nearly two decades with models in this sector featuring a roof mechanism that the Munich maker has had to admit was fundamentally flawed, the Bavarian brand has here produced a car at last good enough to give its Audi and Mercedes arch rivals cause for concern. It isn't quite as taut to drive as a 4 Series Coupe, nor does it ride quite as well, you'd expect that, but dynamically it is a cut above its premium brand rivals in a way that a BMW should be. Great then, it does all the sensible stuff really well too. Boot space is much improved and the extra wheelbase length means that this car can now function as an occasional four-seater in a manner that would have been, well, rather more difficult with its predecessors. You also get a much improved and lovely cabin with cutting edge MediaTek, plus there are very competitive day-to-day -day running costs, and you'll be assured of sensible residual values, which should all help your conscience justify what is essentially a selfish purchase, a reward perhaps for decades of endeavor. In summary, here BMW has built a benchmark contender in this class, offering a sheer depth of engineering that in day-to-day -day driving will rarely fail to impress. And thanks to the change to the soft top format, it's now able to look as striking and expensive as a convertible of this kind should when the sun's out and all's right with the world. True, there are probably all kinds of ways of more sensibly spending the budget that's required for one of these, but you know what? Right here, right now, we can't really think of any. <laughs>